The practices of historical research have changed fundamentally in recent years. As historians work with digital and digitized sources in unprecedented quantity, we need new ways to ensure authenticity and transparency in our research. I'm Sean Tackett. I'm a professor of digital history at the University of Luxembourg. I lead teams of software developers and researchers. Together we are developing new ways for the public and scholars to access and understand the past. It's a, it's a workflow we have been in the scope of a pearl chair at the Luxembourg National Research Fund, historian Professor Sean Tackerts came to Luxembourg in 2019 and built up a group of experts at the Centre for Contemporary and Digital History, an interdisciplinary research centre at the University of Luxembourg. The group is working on solutions to one of the biggest challenges historians face today handling the increasing amount of digital information and data available to researchers. Literally millions of historical documents, images and other artefacts from all over the world have been digitized, making them accessible to new forms of analysis. If you were a researcher in an archive, Oh, 20 years ago. The norm was to be sitting uh, at a desk, uh, reading paper documents and taking notes, or transcribing on a laptop. Around 2004, 2005, people began taking digital photographs in the archives, and this completely transformed the archival experience. Researchers began accumulating thousands, even tens of thousands of photos, and it soon became clear that they needed special software for handling all these images. Sean Tackerts and his team saw an opportunity to create Tropy, a free tool launched in 2017. The idea for Tropy is to take these photos and put them in a piece of software that doesn't care about photos, it cares about documents. So if you photograph a document in the archives, it might be two, three, four, five, ten, a hundred pages. So you're going to have two, three, four, five, a hundred photographs. You want those collapsed into a single document as if you were in the archive, kind of like a light box for those, and then you can transcribe them, you can add tags, you can organize them. Another widely used and free tool Sean Tackett's team developed earlier in his career is Zotero. Over the past 15 years, Zotero has been used by millions of researchers to collect, analyze, and share research. It automates many of the time-consuming aspects of research, like creating footnotes and bibliographies, and it allows researchers around the world to work together collaboratively on their computers, phones and tablets. But while Tropy and Zotero focused on the sources behind research, they did not yet try to analyse these research materials. To address this challenge, Tackett's team is developing a new project within the FNR Pearl Chair, called Lumi. Lumi embeds new analytical tools in a framework that records the choices researchers make so that they can remember how they created and manipulated their own research data. Lumi will allow researchers to use many types of analysis, such as topic modeling, which is a way to use algorithms to try to understand thousands of books or other documents automatically. In my own research, for instance, uh, I have looked at um, Italian-American immigrants' newspapers at the turn of the 20th century in the States, and I have used topic modeling to understand how immigrants were discussing the challenges of being immigrants in the United States at the time. This archive uh, that I looked at, uh, which is, uh, by the way, openly available online, it's called the Chronicle Italy, uh, contains about 16 million words. But at the core of Lumi is not just enhanced functionality, but a new concept of transparency in research. In Lumi we're trying to do something where we want to provide authenticity and trustworthiness to the methods that are used in historical research. So if I'm transforming something, I'm creating a database, I'm doing some operations in that database, I'm collecting some documents and I'm doing a text analysis, topic modeling of those documents, I want to be able to keep track of those methods that I am using, understand where those methods come from, and always keep them connected 
capture the results. One key element, therefore, is that users can view the code working in the software when they perform analytical functions. We are integrating this code view functionality within the interface so that users can see what's happening behind the scenes. So clicking on a button is not only clicking on a button, it's a decision. Uh, that is being made and we would like to find ways to make this uh, obvious uh, for users and uh, also document their choices. Algorithms and machine learning and artificial intelligence is great, yes, but it's kind of a black box. And by opening up these methods, uh, making it more transparent, we hope to uh, empower the researchers themselves to make their own decisions, their critical decisions, and in a way to build this relationship of trust uh, with them. However, the software will only be a success if it is widely adopted. A reality check every new digital tool has to pass, as previous projects have proven. The tools that we develop are used um, outside of, of history. Zotero, I think, has seven, eight million users worldwide. There aren't that many professional historians in the world. So um, it is, it's mostly used actually outside of the, the humanities. And with Lumi, the, the principles that we're using to design the software, they have um, very little to do with history. Uh, they're more about uh, understanding uh, how you can authenticate uh, research, how you can trace research. And so there's nothing in the design of the software that limits it to history or even humanities research. It really can be used by, by anyone. By creating the next generation of digital tools, the experts at the Centre for Contemporary and Digital History are working to establish Luxembourg as a global leader in historical research and development. Through their work, the way we understand the past is being adapted to the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century.